Verizon Express 2015 H18 Pro. 18 feet long, beam of 95 inches, fuel tank capacity, they say 30, this one has a 32 gallon tank. Normally this boat's rated for a 115 engine at most. They do have the option of putting on a 150, but it requires hydraulic steering, which this one does have. So it's got an Evinrude E-Tech 150 on the back, which uh, definitely moves it uh, where you need to go and in a hurry. Um, it'll cruise in mid 50s all day, and if you trim it right, you're in the high 50s, low 60s. This boat has one mission in life, and that's to slay bass, and that it does. That's everything you could possibly need for just such an adventure. Okay. Hummingbird 859 CIHD sonar and GPS. Fuel gauge, trim gauge, water pressure, RPM. Of course, all your buttons. Cool carbon fiber bezel. All right, so you have your hatch for your fuel tank, batteries. Over there's your oil reservoir. This is a two-stroke engine on here. Two storage compartments on either side to hold stuff. And of course your live well, which the controls are here for aerator, automatic, and recirculator. Up front, I actually forgot the other seat at the house, but there's the two seats there. Tons of storage space. Of course it's crammed with life jackets right now. Uh, all right, maybe some white claw containers too, or empty white claw boxes. But tons of room underneath. It actually runs all the way across to the other panel there. So there's plenty space. And of course, locking, because that's a beautiful thing. Especially when you need to lock up your valuables in the honey hole. Bam. The rods. This collection of swords. We won't get into all those, although there is a quite the collection of rods in here. One, two, three, nine. There's like at least nine fully rigged up and ready to go rods in here. Uh, and it holds them no problem. I mean, you could fit more. Tons of space. Bungee for the rods that you have out while you're moving around. This size a motor guide trolley motor mounted on the front, bolted into the aluminum up there. 12 volts here for your night lights, running lights. Uh, it has this built-in well with a drain, of course. When it gets rain in there, I don't know if you can see that because of the shadow. So let's get it in the water. We'll test out some of the performance. And we are on beautiful Lake Weir today. A little windy, a little choppy, so I'm not gonna be able to go full speed, but we'll still be able to get a pretty good idea of what she'll do. Well, 
So this is part of Express's Hyperlift series of hulls. Uh, I guess it, they've been making them for, uh, now it's going on 30 years, because uh, this is a 2015 hull and they were 25 years old at the time. And uh, it does a pretty good job of getting up on plane pretty quickly. And having the 150 on the back definitely doesn't hurt. It's unfortunately choppy today. See a sailboat out on the water. That would have been fun today. All right, so I'm going to do my best to film and drive, giving a little idea of, of her performance and what you can expect if you're to pick one up. And here, before I go, is going to be my one major critique with this boat. I might think of some other things to point out, but my one major critique is the height of the seat. I have to throw a cushion, like a throw cushion or, or a life jacket down below. And even as it sits now, this is, you know, I'm, you gotta peek up to get around the shield sometimes. And if you're lean back, this is your view. So, especially if you're going through canals or something like that, you're putting through, uh, a lot of times I end up sitting up here or standing, but then of course you can't reach the throttle control. Uh, so that's a little bit of a, of a pain but it's not detrimental enough to ruin the experience. I mean, geez, if you're going 50 something miles an hour, you want to be tucked behind this shield anyway. So that's obviously its ideal purpose, first and foremost, is to get you out to the fish as quick as possible, and then you're doing what you're supposed to do. But I still, I like to have visibility. I like to know what I'm, what I'm gonna potentially run into. On a big lake like this, it's not that big a deal. But in tighter quarters, especially if I'm running the Okawaha River or something like that, it I need to be up higher. Super choppy today. I'll try to get over on the leeward side and see if we can open it up on some smoother ground. I could barely get over 32. It was just banging the boat all around. But still handled it pretty well. And you know, this is what happens. You get caught in conditions like this out fishing, that's just how it goes. So even with the wind and the considerable chop, easy to hold 35 to 45 miles an hour. And uh, I I'm not even near pegging it. Still had at least 15, at least 15 miles an hour left in the tank. So uh, very stable. It, you know, even on the even on the waves and the, the swells that you hit, still pretty st stable. Very confidence inspiring. You don't feel like you're gonna gonna sling over and toss off. Uh, it does really, really well. 
So what am I drinking, you ask? Oh, it's just a little song. So I can't tell you exact fuel economy specs, but what I can tell you is anytime I bring out the boat, you know, I'm always out for a few hours. I'm not like out for 12 hours a day, but you know, I'll be out for three, four hours, going, stopping, goosing it, doing, you know, cruising down canals, just a mixture of all of them. I'm never doing just one specific thing. But uh, pretty much every time I go out, I plan on about a quarter tank of gas. Now, that being said, this fuel gauge, and I'm sure every boat is different, but this is a 32 gallon can in the back. That's what it says on the can. The brochure says 30 gallons. So anyway, 32 gallon can. There was less than a quarter of a tank. So basically like an eighth of a tank in there. I put 20 gallons, exactly 20 gallons, and it put me all the way up to the full line. So there was room for probably seven or eight more gallons if I had to guess so it wasn't exactly full so anyway you have to take that in consideration when I say this but judging by the needle I lose about an eighth to a quarter of a tank every time I go out depending on how much I'm running around um, it, which honestly seems very reasonable to me I, I mean I it sips fuel as, as far as I'm concerned it also sips oil uh, it hardly uses any of that it is two-stroke but the freaking thing cranks up every time. It's, a, it's glorious. Uh, that is a 2012 Evinrude Rude E Tech. And it's uh, just a fantastic engine. Like, zero issues with it so far. All that being said, it uh, sips fuel, sips oil. The boat runs really well, planes really easily. Uh, really, really great so far. Plenty of room to move around on, platforms to stand for catching fish, everything's nice and carpeted. Um, you know, if somebody wants to sunbathe on the back or on the front, there's plenty of space for that too. And uh, we use this for wakeboarding. If you saw one of my other videos, uh, we were out wakeboarding on this boat and it pulled it just fine. I mean, it'd be better with the tower or something up higher to pull the uh, wakeboarder out of the water, but you know, it's a bass boat. But I'm just fortunate that I get to wakeboard. And with the 95 inch beam that's just a hair under 8 feet, it's a really fairly wide stable platform for moving around on and switching sides and cast. So overall, everything is good. It's uh, very solid, there's no crazy creaks, there's no, uh, uh, you know, and for being a five year old boat now, it's really holding up very well. It is kept under cover, it's not out in the, in the elements during the day uh, when it's just sitting, but uh, it's it's holding up really well. Uh, it, it feels solid when you're going through the water. There's no crazy creaks or cracks or, or even when it slams hard, it doesn't, you don't feel like the boat's about to fall apart. It's very, very well built. Boat good. Uh, I don't really have too many negative things to say except for just for everyday cruising around, not being able to sit high enough. But that's not what this boat is designed for. So I can't really dock it as a flaw because it's, it's meant for slaying bass. And honestly, that's what it does. Bet I can pull up some pictures. this boat anything uh, I'm sure there's plenty that I missed plenty of features or plenty of, of things that I could have went over with you I'd be happy to answer any questions leave them in the comments below and you know maybe I'll see you out on the lake uh, until then give me a subscribe and uh, follow me for more random reviews and random how to's and random stuff that I do in my life so, appreciate it thanks